Hello. Today we shall read about a famous man called Gautama Buddha. Yes, he is the one after whom the religion Buddhism is named. To begin with, Buddha was not always a monk. That's right. He was born a prince to King Suddhodan and Queen Maya Devi. Why did he then give up all worldly pleasures and lead the life of an ascetic? Well, we shall read about that in the chapter, The Sermon at Banaras. The Sermon at Banaras is originally written by Betty Renshaw. It covers the journey of Gautama Buddha from his princely life to his saintly life. As he saw the sufferings of the world, he chose to surrender the material world and sought enlightenment. Now let's read this story. The Sermon at Banaras, Source, Betty Renshaw, Values and Voices, a college reader. 1975 Gautama Buddha, 563 BC to 483 BC began life as a prince named Siddhartha Gautama in northern India. At 12, he was sent away for schooling in the Hindu sacred scriptures and four years later, he returned home to marry a princess. They had a son and lived for 10 years as befitted royalty. At about the age of 25, the prince, heretofore shielded from the sufferings of the world, while out hunting, chanced upon a sick man, then an aged man, then a funeral procession, and finally a monk begging for alms. These sights so moved him that he at once went out into the world to seek enlightenment concerning the sorrows he had witnessed. He wandered for seven years and finally sat down under a peepal tree where he vowed to stay until enlightenment came. Enlightened, after seven days, he renamed the tree the Bodhi tree, tree of wisdom, and began to teach and to share his new understandings. At that point, he became known as the Buddha, the awakened or the enlightened. The Buddha preached his first sermon at the city of Banaras, most holy of the dipping places on the river Ganges. That sermon has been preserved and is given here. It reflects the Buddha's wisdom about one inscrutable kind of suffering. Kisa Gotami had only one son and he died. In her grief, she carried the dead child to all her neighbours, asking them for medicine. And the people said, she has lost her senses, the boy is dead. At length, Kisa Gotami met a man who replied to her request. I cannot give thee medicine for thy child, but I know a physician who can. And the girl said, Pray tell me, sir, who is it? And the man replied, Go to Sakyamuni, the Buddha. Kisa Gotami repaired to the Buddha and cried, Lord and Master, give me the medicine that will cure my boy. The Buddha answered, I want a handful of mustard seed. And when the girl, in her joy, promised to procure it, the Buddha added, The mustard seed must be taken from a house where no one has lost a child, husband, parent or friend. Poor Kisa Gotami now went from house to house and the people pitied her and said, Here is mustard seed, take it. But when she asked, Did a son or daughter, a father or mother die in your family? They answered her, Alas, the living are few, but the dead are many. Do not remind us of our deepest grief. And there was no house, but some beloved one had died in it. Kisa Gotami became weary and hopeless and sat down at the wayside, watching the lights of the city as they flickered up and were extinguished again. At last, the darkness of the night reigned everywhere and she considered the fate of men that their lives flicker up and are extinguished again. And she thought to herself, How selfish am I in my grief? Death is common to all. So in the story, we came across Kisa Gotami, a young mother who has lost her only child to death. 
She carried her dead child in her arms and went from door to door requesting medicine for her dead son. The neighbours felt sorry for her, yet couldn't help her as her child was dead. They were as helpless as Kisa herself, as they couldn't conflict with the desire of God. At last, someone proposed that she ought to go to the Sakya Muni, the Buddha. When Kisa approached Buddha, seeking a medicine for her dead son, Gautama advised her to bring a handful of mustard seeds from a house where no one had ever lost a loved one. Kisa thought it to be a simple task, so she went about knocking at every one of the houses in town. But obviously, she couldn't locate even a single house where death had not knocked at the door. You see, it is the rule of nature. Weary and hopeless, Kisa Gotami sat down watching the lights of the city. She then realized how selfish and narrow-minded she had been. She realized that death is inevitable and common to all. And with that, we have come to the end of this story. But I will be back with more such interesting stories for you. Till then, keep learning. Bye. Tutormate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.